Oggetti Socievoli. Oggetti Socievoli presenta. A conversation with is hosted by Prisca Arosio. My name is Lauren Reed. I am originally from Australia, but have been based in Berlin for many years now. I am a curator and educator and researcher. And specifically, that means that I work as an independent curator, as well as part of a group of four curators called In Situ Collective. And we're really interested in storytelling and scenography and like to think about how we can bring people into the world of a topic. As an educator, I also teach curatorial topics from developing concept and history of curating. And then lastly, as a researcher, I'm completing my PhD in anthropology. So I'm looking at how people in Thailand actually imagine their futures in outer space, so human futures beyond Earth. Our book is about home and object and how this relationship has changed during the social isolation period. You have been working about homes also from a more psychological point of view and I thought it would be interesting to have also your perspective about this subject. I think part of the book with the participatory project and the image we got has a bit of an anthropological point of view. How you were living in the house before and how this has changed during the lockdown experience. And I think maybe you can also connect it to your exhibition because what would happen if you make a new exhibition now and how would it be the approach? For myself, I have a very small apartment in Berlin. My bedroom, living room, working area, kitchen, bathroom are all you know within mere meters of each other and bedroom and working is combined. Before lockdown, I was trying to work outside as much as possible in cafes and library. I have been working from home in general before the lockdown as well. So at least that wasn't such a huge adjustment. Then being inside my room alone every day, it was a different kind of experience and I definitely focused on reshaping my apartment every few months even to create new perspectives and walls and borders. Then connects to the exhibition that we did, it was called I Dreamed I Was a House, curated as part of Institute Collective. So with this exhibition, we were thinking about the psychological resonances of different rooms in a house. Again, as I just mentioned in Berlin, I have this very small, only three room apartment. Whereas the exhibition that we did, we were thinking about the different psychological ideas behind different rooms in a kind of traditional domestic home. So I'm from Australia and it would be much more common that you live in quite a big house. Um, what we had in this exhibition, we started with a hallway and then you enter into a dining room, a bedroom, a children's room, a workroom and a cellar. So this is kind of very kind of traditional format. But we were thinking also, you know, like how a map of a house also be a kind of map of the mind and what emotions and feelings are connected with different rooms. We invited artists each to respond to each individual room themselves. So we left it open for them to kind of interpret this emotional affective side. But we were thinking about, for example, the dining room as the kind of public facade, the sociable place, whereas the bedroom is that kind of private sphere, very intimate and something that you don't show publicly. The office or the work as a kind of retreat from the domestic sphere, you know, that you have a little escape from the children in the, the playroom who will be concocting fantastical worlds. It's interesting to think about that kind of architecture in relation to the lockdown, because I think also in terms of your book, you can see how all of those rooms and emotional resonances kind of become one thing. The kitchen, maybe that was an escape for someone from working. They spend their time then cooking and using that space. Or I noticed there were a lot of terraces and that people got to go outside and, and take a break. But with the exhibition, we were kind of thinking of each room as one kind of realm of emotion. But then when you see the, the lockdown, it feels like a a roller coaster of many different emotions, all kind of cramped into very tight space. If we were curating it again, I imagine it would be a much more disorienting and fragmented experience. But maybe you go into one corner and it's the stress corner, and then go into <laughs> walk one step away, and suddenly you're in a moment of sunshine. 
I think a lot of people live in the city, so they don't have the big houses with a lot of different rooms. I think this is also connected with the cultural way of building the house. I noticed, for example, by being here for a long time in the Netherlands, so they care more about the living space. So the living space is always big, but then the bedrooms are really small. If you have a good space bedroom, then you can play more because maybe you can put a study room. So there is more flow within the house rather than maybe in places that have a smaller bedroom. I think it's very much culturally constructed, but I met a very interesting architect of outer space. So he was designing like the International Space Station, the kind of indoor, not for the International Space Station specifically, but for how we can construct living environments, remote environments. And this was pre-pandemic, but he was talking about the importance of having kind of spaces that are designated for certain areas or functions or activities. So even when you're in a very small area, then to have this living space and the sleeping space, uh, at least psychologically feeling separated, it was Japanese. And he was basing it on the Japanese idea of the tatami map, which directs you through space. And so again, when you think about this cultural idea of spaces and domestic living, and I know in Japan, they have very small uh, living spaces. And so then thinking about how they kind of construct that and value certain spaces over others. I think it's really fascinating. What value were you giving to object and uh, how this has changed during your lockdown experience? You know, around the concept of sociable objects too. At first I was kind of intuitively thinking like when I just read the word sociable object, that the objects are kind of facilitating a relationship either between yourself and the object or maybe yourself and others. And I felt like in the book, I was really struck by how many of them were opening up a new experience or as you say a new space or you know like the headphones that you can listen to music with then or the bowl to bake bread in or the the desk to work at they were all kind of the objects with facilitators for experience and when you asked me about this project and I was thinking like oh what did I discover and what did I rediscover and reinterpret during the time I was really thinking oh my my objects are so boring because they're so practical they were really about how I can make my my life feel better in my home. I think when I was younger, like in my 20s, I used to be very sentimental and attached to objects and I would have trouble letting these go. But as I got older and traveled more and had to move house more, I realized I prefer to live more minimally. During the lockdown, the objects that were most meaningful to me, I bought some curtain poles, like a suspension pole that you mm -hmm. can hang curtains from. It's, and so it let me put up fake walls in my apartment. I could change my workplace and I could stop looking at my bed or I could stop looking at something else and have this kind of fake room that I could change whenever I wanted as an object. Things like candles I really like to use to create smell or scent in my home. So it feels like you're creating a kind of special atmosphere. It was kind of noticeable just these really small details in how you can use an object to make your home feel more cozy or comfortable or luxurious even when you don't have those other external experiences. What is sociable objects mean to you and what does it remind you? You can break it down into the two senses of sociable and an object so what does it mean to be sociable and to relate to something and have the kind of meaningful interaction with something so we develop meaningful relationships with objects and they shape our daily life as much as we shape our lives through cultivating objects and, and bringing them in uh, for me i was kind of struck with how humble they were i was thinking about this contrast between for example social media and you scroll through instagram and before covid especially it was you know everyone living their best life drinking a prosecco on a yacht or whatever you know that, that's not all of instagram but there's this kind of presentation of the big and ambitious and spectacular whereas these objects for me felt so humble and useful uh, one of the persons sarah she had pizza the title takeaway comfort and she said that she included it because it represented joy and also the illusion of normality that's no longer existing today and for me i could really feel this kind of quest for normality in a lot of the objects. They were kind of being used either as a form of escapism or making your life 
feel normal as much as before or to connect with others or to open up creativity and, and all of these kind of very human things that make us human, eating, drinking, socializing, singing.